the iron fist of Mary Rocker. The sky was streaked with deep hues of orange and pink as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting an eerie glow over the newly fortified grounds of Heavenly Haven Commune. The tranquil beauty of the surroundings was now juxtaposed with the stern, militaristic aura that Mary Rocker had imposed. The serene community had transformed into a fortress, a stark reminder of the ideological shift under its new leader. Mary Rocker had taken decisive steps to solidify her control over the commune, implementing stringent security measures and fortifying the compound with military precision. Her latest move involved dealing with dissenters who had openly challenged her authority, and she intended to handle the situation with the same uncompromising efficiency that characterized her leadership. Chapter 1 The Makeshift Jail The dissenters, a group of members who had questioned Mary Rocker's aggressive policies and militarization of the commune, found themselves in a precarious situation. Their public challenge had not gone unnoticed, and Mary's loyalists had swiftly acted to contain the threat. The makeshift jail, constructed from repurposed shipping containers and reinforced with steel bars, stood as a grim symbol of Mary Rocker's new regime. Located near the perimeter of the compound, it was designed to isolate and contain those who were deemed disruptive to the new order. The once open area where communal activities had taken place was now overshadowed by this imposing structure, reflecting the growing divide within Heavenly Haven. The dissenters, led by Helen and several other vocal critics of Mary's leadership, were forcibly escorted to the jail by Mary's loyalists. The loyalists, clad in tactical gear and armed with rifles, exhibited a sense of cold efficiency as they handled the situation. They were led by Mary's recently appointed second-in-command, a stern and unyielding figure named Sergeant Laura Finch. Sergeant Finch was a former combat officer with a reputation for her no-nonsense approach and her readiness to confront any challenge head-on. Her appointment as Mary Rocker's second-in-command had been strategic, ensuring that the leadership was backed by someone capable of enforcing Mary's policies with both authority and aggression. As the dissenters were ushered into the jail, their expressions ranged from shock to defiance. Helen, the spokesperson for the dissenting group, tried to reason with the loyalists, but her pleas were met with stern silence. The heavy door of the jail clanged shut, leaving the dissenters in the oppressive confines of their new quarters. Inside the jail, the dissenters faced harsh conditions. The space was stark and utilitarian, with minimal furnishings and inadequate ventilation. The once communal spirit of the commune was replaced by an atmosphere of fear and isolation. Chapter 2 Mary Rocker's New Strategy With the dissenters secured in the makeshift jail, Mary Rocker turned her attention to consolidating her power and ensuring that her regime was unchallenged. Her new strategy involved not only the enforcement of her policies, but also the selection of key personnel who would help her maintain control. Mary recognized the need for a reliable and formidable figure to support her leadership, someone who could handle both the internal and external pressures facing the commune. Sergeant Laura Finch, with her extensive military background and her readiness to use force if necessary, was the ideal choice for the role of second-in-command. Mary convened a meeting with Sergeant Finch and a few trusted advisors in her command tent. The tent, located at the heart of the fortified compound, was a hub of activity and strategy. Maps and tactical plans were spread out on the table, and the atmosphere was one of intense focus. Laura, Mary began, her tone both commanding and respectful, you've proven yourself to be a capable and decisive leader. With the dissenters now contained, we must focus on solidifying our control and preparing for any further challenges. Sergeant Finch nodded, her expression resolute. Understood, Mary. I've already begun reinforcing the patrols and ensuring that the new security protocols are being followed. We can't afford any lapses in discipline. Mary's gaze was intense as she continued. We need to make it clear that resistance will not be tolerated. The dissenter's actions have shown that there are still those among us who doubt our mission. We must be vigilant and decisive. As the meeting continued, Mary and Sergeant Finch discussed plans for increasing surveillance, tightening security measures, and reinforcing the commune's defenses. The conversation was strategic and focused, reflecting the seriousness with which Mary approached her leadership. 
Chapter 3. The Dissenters' Plight Inside the makeshift jail, the dissenters were grappling with their new reality. Helen and the others were subjected to harsh conditions and minimal contact with the outside world. Their situation was a stark contrast to the communal ideals that had once characterized Heavenly Haven. Helen, determined to maintain her dignity despite the circumstances, attempted to rally the group and keep their spirits up. She spoke of their shared vision for a peaceful and harmonious community, contrasting sharply with the militaristic turn that Mary Rocker had imposed. The world outside may not understand what's happening here, Helen said to her fellow dissenters, but we must hold on to our beliefs. We cannot let them break us. Despite Helen's efforts to provide hope and encouragement, the conditions in the jail were grim. The lack of proper sanitation, limited food, and inadequate bedding made life uncomfortable and demoralizing. The dissenters' pleas for better treatment were met with indifference from Mary's loyalists. Chapter 4. The Growing Divide The presence of Mary Rocker's loyalists and the harsh conditions faced by the dissenters had created a growing divide within the commune. The once unified community was now marked by fear, mistrust, and a sense of betrayal. Members of the commune who had once embraced the ideals of harmony and collective well-being now found themselves caught between their former values and the new, militaristic reality imposed by Mary Rocker. Conversations that had once centered on communal living and spiritual growth were now dominated by discussions of security, discipline, and loyalty. Mary's loyalists were vigilant in their enforcement of the new rules. They patrolled the grounds with a sense of purpose, ensuring that no one questioned the new regime or attempted to undermine its authority. The atmosphere was tense, with members wary of being reported for any perceived dissent. The media continued to report on the situation at Heavenly Haven, fueling public interest and concern. The stories of dissenters being held in harsh conditions, combined with the commune's militarization, painted a troubling picture of the once peaceful community. Chapter 5. The Ultimatum as the situation within the commune grew increasingly strained, Mary Rocker decided to take a decisive step to assert her control. She issued an ultimatum to the remaining members, demanding that they fully support the new regime or face consequences. A mass meeting was called in the central courtyard, where Mary addressed the assembled members with a stern and unwavering demeanor. Sergeant Laura Finch stood beside her, her presence reinforcing the seriousness of Mary's message. Members of Heavenly Haven, Mary began, her voice carrying a sense of authority and finality. We are at a critical juncture. The dissenters have been dealt with, but we cannot afford any further disruption. We must be united in our commitment to the security and future of this commune. She continued, From this moment forward, any resistance to our new order will be met with the full force of our authority. We are building a stronger, more resilient community, and each of you has a role to play in this transformation. Mary's words were met with a mix of apprehension and reluctant agreement. The members knew that questioning the new regime would come with severe consequences, and many chose to remain silent rather than risk further reprisals. Chapter 6. The Dissenters' Rebellion Despite the stern warnings, a small group of dissenters, led by Helen, continued to resist Mary Rocker's regime. They were determined to challenge the new leadership and seek a resolution to their plight. The dissenters managed to devise a plan to escape from the makeshift jail. With the help of a few sympathetic members who had managed to maintain contact with them, they were able to gather supplies and organize a daring attempt to break free. The plan was risky and required precise timing. Under the cover of darkness, the dissenters made their move. They overpowered the guards using makeshift tools and their wits to break out of the jail. Their escape was a desperate bid for freedom, driven by their refusal to accept the new reality imposed by Mary Rocker. However, their attempt did not go unnoticed. The escape triggered a swift and brutal response from Mary Rocker's loyalists. The dissenters were recaptured after a tense and violent confrontation, and their failed attempt to flee only further entrenched Mary Rocker's resolve to maintain control. Chapter 7. The Consequences The fallout from the escape attempt was severe. Mary Rocker's loyalists increased their surveillance and enforcement efforts, 
implementing even stricter measures to prevent any further dissent. The remaining members of the commune faced heightened scrutiny and discipline as Mary sought to quash any lingering resistance. The dissenters who had attempted to escape were subjected to even harsher conditions. Their punishment was made an example to deter others from challenging the regime. The once hopeful atmosphere of the commune had become a place of fear and repression, with the promise of unity and peace overshadowed by the harsh reality of Mary Rocker's leadership. The external media coverage of the commune situation intensified, with reports of the failed escape attempt and the subsequent crackdown drawing widespread attention. The story of Heavenly Haven, once a symbol of idyllic communal living, had become a cautionary tale of authoritarianism and internal strife. Epilogue, The Uncertain Future As the days passed, the situation at Heavenly Haven continued to evolve. Mary Rocker's leadership had solidified her control over the commune, but at the cost of its original ideals and the well-being of its members. The once-promised sanctuary had become a battleground of power and repression. The future of the commune remained uncertain, with the internal conflicts and external pressures shaping its trajectory. The story of Heavenly Haven had become a complex and troubling narrative, reflecting the challenges and consequences of pursuing a vision of order and control at the expense of its foundational values. The commune's journey was far from over, and the ultimate resolution of its struggles remained to be seen. The tale of Mary Rocker's leadership, the dissenters' resistance, and the ongoing turmoil within Heavenly Haven served as a stark reminder of the delicate balance between ideals and reality.